What's up, what's up? This is Bobby Wagner, linebacker from the Seattle Seahawks. And today, I'm gonna take you in a day in the life with me. Come enjoy. This is the facility. I know it's an off day, but a lot of guys come in, take care of the body, watch film. We're headed to the weight room. Later on, you're gonna catch us at the house and kind of talk about what we do there. But for now, it's time to get some work in the weight room. I think the biggest thing that worked for me is just consistency. Coming up with a plan and just sticking to it. A lot of people come up with a lot of crazy workouts. Uh, it changes every week and I think that doesn't set you up for success. So finding a good workout and being consistent with it is something that I feel is the biggest thing. It's tough, because if you do too much, then you're tired for the game. If you don't do enough, you don't feel ready. It's just really honing in and, and making sure you're taking notes about what you're doing, what works well, what doesn't work well. It's kind of like a whole body. So you got some lower body stuff, got some upper body stuff, um, some squats, some rope. Just a little bit of everything to try to, you know, work everything in the body. We just had a nice intense workout, but now it's just recovering, making sure we uh, get ready for the next day. Uh, they're compression boots, so basically they help stimulate your legs to, to promote recovery and you know help you heal faster. People that understand how to take care of their body, how to recover, is the ones that last the longest. So being able to figure out what works for you, a lot of people think recovery is not important or like just going to sleep is recovery, which it is, but there's other things that you gotta do. Some of the things that I incorporate with my recovery is yoga, swimming, pretty much everything. I actually learned how to swim um, here at the facility with Sherm. Massages, dry needling, acupuncture, the boots. When I first got into the league, uh, we would work out throughout the season and it would, you know, we would kind of have to do it on paper to figure out what we were doing week two versus what we were doing week 12. And so now the surface has made that a lot easier. So I can track what I was doing week 12 versus week two, see if I'm getting better, see if I need to do more. Um, and I can even track that from, from years ago to figure out where I was at in 2018 to where I'm at now. All of that is a lot easier. I think this is one of the prettiest skylines. There's a park over here where you see everything. You see the Space Needle, you see the field, you see the Ferris wheel. I just think like in the summertime, there's, there's not a prettier place than Seattle. My first impression of Seattle when I first moved here was it was really green. And I came in like summertime, so I, I thought it just was sunny the whole time. And then it started raining, never stopped. I mean, it wasn't as bad as people made it seem. It is not like this all the time. It was just fine the other day, but they knew y'all was coming, so they wanted to show out. My favorite thing about living here, they're just good people. You come to Seattle, you chill. Get in the water, get in the lake, get on the uh, you know jet ski, things of that nature. Like, it's more chill, more of a chill vibe out here. Welcome to the house. We worked out, we watched film, we had meetings. As busy as I am, there's so much more time to do other things and I decided I'm gonna get my MBA from Howard and I think it's gonna help for my life after football whenever I wanna get to that. Just being able to have that degree and even though I've been dedicating my life to football, I just wanna put myself in the best position possible. You know, my hopes is to someday own a team and run a team and run a fund myself, but obviously the learning comes first. Now I did a tech tour where we were able to go down and actually visit some of the, the HBCUs and Howard was one of them that I got to go to and I fell in love with the campus, I fell in love with the people and it was something that I wanted to do to continue my education. I have a check-in with my wealth manager, my business partner, my brother, Humble, and so we check in just to go over our finances, make sure the money's right. Okay, man, Bob, it's good to see you, man. How's everything? Everything is great, man. You know, taking it one day at a time, trying to get these wins up. I was proud of you, man, doing all the, uh, the market volatility uh, of this year. Because you've been so focused and so locked in of your financial uh, empire, being the driver's seat of your legacy. I learned a lot through this year. I think the biggest thing that I learned is just, it's, it was kind of a reset. And so I think a lot of people learn, especially myself, learn, you know, always have a plan. We were able to uh, withstand the volatility and even excel in these uncertain times 
because of how educated you are. Appreciate you, humble. No, of course, King. All right, man. Proud of you, man. Love you, man. Thank you. Love you too. Humble has really challenged me to learn. We weren't going to do anything unless I understood what we were doing. You want to be able to, you know, have something that you could pass down to your children and affect the community that you come from and the community that embraces you. I want to show you something, something that means a lot to me. My mom is somebody that lives through me and somebody that I think about every single day. You know, she had suffered from stroke, but I know a lot of other people that suffer from stroke. And it's not something that a lot of people talk about. We created this comic book and created a fund in my mom's name to help raise money and awareness around the people that have suffered from stroke and get them the help that they need. This is the beginning of the book. It goes into like a little note about why this was made and, and the impact that my mom had. And that's her, it's a picture of us. And then we kind of dive into the comic book. We, we uh, recognize the, the signs of stroke and then you go into, I have a rookie, I'm showing them the ropes. It looks crazy, it looks dangerous, but then as you get further along into the story, I'm not the person that actually saves lives. The idea behind the comic book was basically, you don't have to be a superhero to understand the signs of stroke. You don't have to be a superhero to help. So that was the big concept, is trying to paint the picture that you don't have to be a superhero to save lives. All right, you guys got to spend a day with me. We worked out, we recovered, we talked about community. We did a little bit of everything, but now it's time for me to go to sleep. I appreciate you watching that video, but before you dip, do me a little favor. Go hit the OT shop and check out some of the new drops. They're all bangers. It's going to be hard to pick a favorite, but I promise it'll be worth it when you do.